I think um, that this was something that personally uh, I didn't vote for. It marks the end of uh, a period of over 40 years where we've been in a certain set of relationships. But my own view is that the vote happened. The vote has to be respected. It was a huge fact that has changed things. And therefore, our task as a country is to come together and get on with implementing Brexit as intelligently as we can and as fast as we can. How ready are both sides for the negotiations? Well, I think both sides clearly have spent the last nine months or so uh, getting uh, themselves in order. Uh, for me, I think the biggest question is um, what's the spirit into which both sides are entering this and what is the uh, mindset as to whether or not actually they want to do a deal. I believe that if both sides do want to do some kind of deal, and I think it's in the interests of both sides to do one, then you'll end up concluding something because the European system, above all, is a negotiating system. And I think that once it starts, uh, we're likely to find our way through to a sensible conclusion. So for me, the big question is the first period, the next three to six months, uh, to try and make sure that we do get off to a sensible start and hotheads don't drive the agenda one way or the other. Are the hotheads to which you referred on this side of the channel or are they in Brussels? I think there are people on both sides um, who start from totally um, opposed positions ideologically but both have um, an interest in things, uh, in the negotiations being uh, you know, nasty, brutish and short. Um, and uh, so I, I think it's on both sides and so I think the risk um, magnified by our media is that rhetoric escalates and makes sensible compromise harder to achieve. Now Michel Barnier, the EU's chief negotiator, has said that he wants us to agree a divorce bill before we proceed with other parts of the negotiations. Is that something on which the UK is going to have to give way? Well I see myself, I see it all as part of a package. I don't see how you can talk about uh, leaving uh, without also talking about the future at the same time. I do see it as um, part of the whole. There are clearly going to be discussions about money uh, and uh, I think the British government said that we accept there are some you know, obligations we've entered into that we'll honour and I think you need to honour those in terms of your international reputation. Uh, but I see all of these elements as being linked and so for me the key question isn't to get fixated on particular elements of them, it's to say do we want to get a deal? Is it in Europe and Britain's interest to sort this out sensibly? Would it send a good message to the rest of the world for the EU if they can resolve this amicably? Because their big priority is how do you get growth going? How do you grapple with some of the other issues they've got? So I don't think it's in their interests any more than Britain's to spend years and years uh, beating each other up over this. Now, as Commissioner, you held the financial services portfolio. How optimistic are you about the city's future post-Brexit? Well, I think the, I, the best way I can answer that question is by telling you what people in the city have said to me. And I think in the immediate aftermath of the, um, of the vote, I think they were concerned. Before the vote, there was a kind of uniform view that they thought we'd be better off staying in and in the single market. I think by the autumn, uh, we were starting to see a more differentiated picture. So different sectors have a different um, feeling about the future depending on how they are likely to be affected. And within sectors, some banks are more relaxed about it than other banks, for example. So I think the predominant mood is that um, the city will come through this, uh, that people, I think, businesses are looking at how can you move as little as possible for as long as possible. I don't think there is going to be a kind of light switch. I don't think at the beginning where some people were saying this means the end of London, a renaissance for Paris or for Frankfurt. I don't believe that's going to happen for a variety of reasons. Uh, I think London is full of um, a huge amount of extremely talented people from all over the globe. And when you put lots of clever people in a small space, they tend to be able to find ways of regenerating themselves and being successful. So I think that's what will happen. But do you accept that there will have to be job cuts in the city? Well, that's going to be a decision for the businesses involved. It looks at the moment likely there are going to be some uh, job losses. The scale at the moment looks 
uh, at the low end of the spectrum so far compared with what people were saying in advance. But I think the honest answer is it's early days um, and some of it will depend on where we end up in terms of you know, the basis of which we agree the terms that financial services in particular will carry on trading with each other. Obviously you resigned as a commissioner shortly after the Brexit votes. What did your resignation achieve? Uh, I resigned for one simple reason, uh, which was I think that in politics and in business uh, there is a feeling widespread and deserved that when things go wrong, people at the top don't resign. Uh, and I thought it was um, just completely unthinkable that when something as big as Brexit happens, uh, the Britain's commissioner uh, could sit there as though nothing had happened. I mean, that for me would have summed up everything that people thought about the system. So uh, I thought it was um, the right thing to do uh, on grounds of principle. Uh, I also think from a practical point of view on financial services, where I was trying to reform financial services, make them uh, more uh, market uh, orientated, outward looking, um, that it would not have been possible for a Brit to carry on regulating financial services when financial services are going to be a key part of any discussion that we have with our European friends on the terms of our leaving. So I think practically it wouldn't have been possible either. Would you like to be participating in the exit negotiations? I think that um, this is one thing where I'm very happy, having stuck my hands in the mangle over the last six years in the British government, to leave others to do it. Uh, and um, I think that we need people who, uh, whether it's in business as well, um, who have friends in Europe, to keep talking to them, to try and keep routes of communication open, because the more that there are uh, sensible, rational voices, um, the more likely we are to have a sensible outcome to the negotiation. Now you're in the process of organising the Prosperity UK conference. What's that all about and what do you hope to achieve from it? It's a sort of bunch of leavers and remainers um, who've come together. Uh, I think both of us share the same frustration that the political debate in the UK seems to be a bit stuck and that people are in politics rerunning the referendum um, vote by proxy. And uh, I think that um, you have to uh, accept the outcome of the result. Then the challenge is, OK, uh, how are we going best to adapt to this, deal with any problems, make the most of any opportunities, and ask yourself what kind of economy, what kind of society do we want to be, what strengths can we have as an economy, and how can we build on it? So the idea is to build, bring together um, business, who I think have got m a much quicker to respond and to adapt than politics, because they have to be every day, uh, to um, come together, be honest and realistic about the challenges, be optimistic about the opportunities, and uh, come up with practical suggestions, constructive thinking, as to how we can try to move things forward. We've had a fantastic response from business. Everyone we've asked to come and speak has said yes, unless they're physically you know, out of the country. Uh, and I hope it will mark um, you know, the beginning of a more constructive approach to how we think and talk about some of these issues.